Hey guys, I'm here in this map hallway getting a private tour of the Vatican Museum. And you have to see this. <laughs> this place is like beyond opulent, and uh, which obviously is an issue on so many levels. I'll turn the camera around so you can actually see some of this better. Whoops. Okay. So this is the map room, this long hallway, and it is just incredible. I've always, since I was a little boy, I've always loved maps for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why, but um, this ceiling is just insane. It's nice to be here at the Vatican Museum. I've been here before, but uh, it's nice to be doing this when uh, there's not so many people here and it's just a private group of about uh, 30 or 40 of us, I guess, that are taking a tour, and there's like tons of people outside. Um, kind of unbelievable, but we're of course on our way to the Sistine Chapel, and um, it is a pretty amazing place with a lot of history, and a storied history. You know, obviously there's so many people that have different perspectives on you know, the Catholic Church and, and religion in general. And I should say that, you know, I'm not religious at all. Uh, although I am very spiritual, I do believe in God, but I believe the entire universe is God. And that includes every aspect of it, every single one of us. And um, it's, uh, I think it's a very beautiful world if we allow ourselves to see the beauty in the world, even the difficulty and that's the really wonderful part about the awakening process. As Richard Rudd says, it's a series of softenings that allow us to transmute pain into purpose. And that's really the alchemy. That's really the truth of the turning lead into gold. So many people think that this aspect of you know, transmutation is really about a literal sense and that was the whole purpose of it. So you could get rich turning lead into gold. Anyone who understands alchemy knows truly that that's not what this is about. It's about learning to realize that every experience that you have is for your own benefit ultimately, that all the things that you thought were happening to you were actually happening for you if you allowed yourself to see it as such. And that ultimately, we choose it all. And that's kind of, I think the most important thing to remember is that we, we choose it all. And a lot of people ask me all the time, it's like, what does it mean to be the one who's choosing it all? You're telling me that I chose to suffer? And what I'm saying is, yes. Um, and I know that's a hard one for people to hear and listen to. It's not that you could easily comprehend it. And of course you didn't choose it in your conscious mind. You chose it every experience that you have in your unconscious mind. Because the purpose that we have here, I believe on earth, is that each of us is providing a different perspective back to the one of different ways of observing the universe, that we are observing the universe through our eyes of conditioning bias, our eyes of experience, through our own lens of perspective, and that that lens of perspective is exactly what the universal one wants so that it can also gain wisdom. That means we have to experience difficulty and challenge sometimes. And, but all of us have experienced at one point in time or another, moments where we felt like this is the worst thing that ever happened to me. And as you look back on your life, very often those same people and those same exact experiences have been transmuted because there was something deeply profound. There was something significant that was learned from it. And this is the journey of the human story. The human story is the story of the hero's journey. And each of us, as we go through life, you know, I remember back when I was in junior high school, the teachers that were easy on me, I don't even remember. I don't even give a shit. I don't, I don't think about them. The ones that expected more from me than I thought I could actually achieve and do are the ones that I remember the most. I remember their names. I don't even remember the names of the other ones. We tend to remember the challenges. And if we can look at those challenges 
and realize that they are what they are for our ultimate benefit in learning and growth, then all of the lead of our experience can transmute into gold. That is the truth of alchemy. And you know, I think the Vatican is an aspect of the whole entire human story as well. A lot of people ask me, why would you come to the Vatican? Well, if we are in denial of ourselves, then all the things that we are in denial of end up showing up in the world around us because we live in a veritable U inverse, a U inverse of, of our own perspective and perception. So we have an X and we have a one over X experience. And anything that we suppress out of ourselves that we can't see in ourselves, because the truth is we're all the undivided one. We're just living in this experience of separation. Again, to observe the universe through our eyes that are unique, through our own conditioning bias, through our own experiential lenses. And that that lens actually grows the overall universe. And that each one of us along our journey and path also advance to expand. And growth and conscious expansion is really fundamentally simply about being able to recognize different viewpoints, different perspectives. As we grow, the patterns of our life become more and more illuminated to us. And what we looked at before and saw nothing significant as maybe a child or as an adolescent, in our adulthood and in our later years, we start realizing the patterns were there all along. It was there for our ultimate learning. And then you start realizing that maybe everything is patterned. All these mundane aspects that we thought were not patterned at all, maybe we're always patterned all along. We just weren't able to perceive that pattern. Doesn't mean the pattern didn't exist. Maybe it was just beyond our perception. And that being beyond the perception is actually just another form of consciousness using cryptography. I'm a cryptographer. I do a lot of work in the cryptography field. And part of the reason I think I went into this field and why so many people that go on this journey end up in that field throughout history is because everyone starts to realize the hand of the great cryptographer, which is actually you and your higher self. The great cryptographer is leaving messages for you everywhere. The last night I was in, I posted this on my Telegram channel, um, but I was you know, listening to this opera singer here in the Vatican and it was pretty fascinating because um, I looked at the wall and we were in this place called the uh, Palazzo della Cancelleria. Cancelleria. And I, as I was in there, I looked up at the wall and I noticed that there was a, a painting of Hermes and of course holding a staff of Hermes. And I was thinking to myself, wow, that's a pretty cool little encryption just hiding right in there. And um, these symbols are everywhere. They could take numerical form. They could take the form of synchronicities. Uh, I've been getting tons and tons of synchronicities this week, more than I've ever had before. And as we get more adept at balancing our masculine and feminine, often what happens is the world around us also starts to look a little darker because if there's going to be more light, then the light has to be compensated by greater darkness. It's the nature of it. The night is darkest just before the dawn. And as each of us start to ascend, don't be surprised when all of a sudden you start noticing that a lot of the things, they may not be touching you, it may not be directly in your field, but off in the distance you'll see increase of duality. This is like all the movies that we see of Hero's Journey. A good example of this is Lord of the Rings. Just when Gandalf the Grey ends up falling into the pit with that fire dragon, and then later comes back as Gandalf the White, the world becomes more and more dark. So the orcs show up, the monsters, the, the black magic, all of those things come up because they're in balance, in perfect balance with the increase in the light. I'm in this room right here. It's pretty fascinating. This is a symbology of Plato's Academy. That's Plato walking there in the center on the left, and there are several other philosophers there with him in this place. And this is a particular type of drawing technique that is perspective geometry drawing. 
so it gives you the illusion of three-dimensional imagery. And every time you see this kind of drawing depicted, it always is accompanied by an increase in human consciousness and a renaissance. So perspective geometry drawing was very popular during the Renaissance period, giving this illusion, taking a two-dimensional object and turning it into a three-dimensional perception. I love to do this kind of drawing as well. I find that it is extremely consciousness expanding, and I love geometry because geometry is effectively forcing us, each of us, as we draw this geometry by hand. It has to be done by hand, I believe. It forces us to perceive other new perspectives, angles and viewpoints. So uh, I'm gonna be posting here more of this visit as I'm going throughout today. Um, so you can see some of the things I'm experiencing as well. And again, it is, it is a privilege to be here without you know, thousands of people all around. Usually you're packed in this place. Uh, the Sistine Chapel is pretty incredible. So if they let me film in the Sistine Chapel, I'll, I'll show you that too in case you've never seen it before. It's definitely something that should be experienced and seen. And uh, I remember the first time I came here, I was a young boy. But then I came again in 2010 when I was starting to really go through my awakening process and I noticed so many new things I'd never noticed before. Here, we'll have a look at this room too. One of the things I noticed was that Michelangelo had depicted a brain around God, a veritable mirror between Adam and God. And. Um, Hopefully I'll get to show that to you in a little bit as well. I, I'm not a believer in God as the old man, but I am a believer in we live in a mirror of consciousness. I'm going to sign out for now, guys. Love to you.